Thanks, Steve. Good job with the improved phase. Hello, everyone, again. I'm Jeff Gray, Six Sigma Master Black Bell here at SixSigmaTV.net. In this phase, I'm going to take you through the final phase of the DMAIC uh, process and methodology overview. And this is going to be the control phase. Once you've done all your data collection, you've identified your root causes, you've done the improvements, um, you've done your pilot, now we have to sustain those improvements, and that's with the control phase. So you have your new processes documented, you evaluate the results of your learnings in your pilot, um, you complete any standard operating procedures, you publish those, you confirm your financial benefits, you run that by your, um, your uh, division financial officer or whatever you call them in your organization to validate your hard savings and soft savings from the project. That way they will know that it's in the books, it's on the general ledger and that's what you want with your hard saving. Um, and then, don't forget, most importantly, celebrate. You've worked hard, you've gone through this long project and methodology, you've been in meetings, you've gathered data, you've done analysis. Um, don't forget to celebrate the success. That's a key thing. Celebrate, have a little party. So, the steps that you're gonna go through, you're gonna develop your control plan in this phase. Um, you're going to pilot and validate those solutions. You're going to use a tool called statistical process control. That's going to help you monitor where your new process is. Um, you're going to also do your new um, capability analysis from that pilot, your new standard deviations, your new defects from main opportunities, all of those things is going to let you know where the new process is. You're going to have an implementation plan for that improved process. You're going to do your cost benefit analysis. And again, you're going to celebrate the success. So the control phase helps you also manage risk. And we do that by using an FMEA, failure modes and effects analysis. It makes sure that once you have re-engineered that process, you look at all the risks also. You make sure you don't um, change anything where you're gonna have legal issues or product failures in some other area, service delivery problems or any of that kind of stuff. So we use a tool called an FMEA that helps you uh, mitigate the risk of that new process. You're going to control the process, look at the benefits, and then implement that new process. So deliverables of the control plan, first thing you do, it helps ensure that controls and measurements are in place to maintain the long-term process improvement. It addresses any potential failures, your measurements and specifications that you're going to monitor, and establishes a response plan in case your process starts to stray again. You might have to hand it off to a new process owner six months down the line. What's the plan if it strays, if people come and go from that process? It helps ensure that critical skills will be maintained through the use of your standard referencing and operating procedures and allows team leaders to complete the project um, and to assist in a timely transition of the improved process. So that's your control plan. And we have that template up at the website, SixSigmaTV.net. You can look at the templates. And, and pull those down for your, to, uh, to use in your projects there. Now, the next thing you wanna do is what's called control charting, or SPC. What this does, it's a statistical tool. You've seen a couple of them throughout the White Belt um, course. We've talked about your, when you do your st stability testing in your um, measure phase, in your analyze phase, excuse me. Um, that is what's called a control chart. What that does is it helps you understand where your process is. And that's what you want to do is you want to understand where your new process is. Is it predictable? Is it stable? Is it normal? And are you meeting your process capabilities? And that's what the control charts are. There's a variety of control charts you can do. Um, and if you look at the next chart there, depending on the type of data you have, you'll use specific types of chart, uh, control charts. This one here is for your attribute data. And depending on the types of defects or defectives you have and what you're monitoring, you will use these charts. And we go in depth in our module on SPC. We have one for discrete information and one for uh, attribute, or excuse me, for continuous data or variables data. And that's the stuff that's measured. Attributes are the things that are good, bad, defects or defectives. So depending on what you're monitoring, we'll teach you the right tool to use um, in the SPC control charting segments. Also, another tool you'll use in the control phase is an FMEA. As you look at here, this template 
you'll see a lot of tools tie into this. Your voice of the customer, your k analysis, your process maps, your c &E matrix. As you move down the process, now you want to prioritize those projects using that c &E matrix. You want to prioritize the root causes that you're going to look at and, and control. You want to put them into a failure modes and effect analysis to analyze the risk. And that's what that tool does as you re-engineer that process. It lets you look at the risk of re-engineering that process and if you've forgotten anything. And if you, if you do have risk or issues, how are you going to mitigate those risks? So your FMEA is a great tool to use to help you look at that and control and sustain the changes that you've done out there. The next step in your control phase is to validate your uh, cost-benefit analysis. Have we reduced the cost of poor quality? Have we generated new revenue? Have we eliminated inventory requirements, lead times on purchasing so we can use that, that revenue um, for something else? Have we um, improved the throughput time or the cycle time? What do we gain from doing that? Can we do more with less? Those are the things you want to look at. You want to look at hard savings, things that you're going to see in the budget on the books. Those are the things that you want to drive home in your projects are generating hard dollar savings in your organization. That's what we want to do with a lot of our projects here. Some projects we don't. We want to do other things, just improve customer satisfaction, which we really can't, can't um, put a dollar value on. So we will put that as a soft savings. We know we've done something to improve, but it might just be a soft save. You'll, you'll identify those with your master black belt and with your uh, division financial officer there. So you want to validate those and make sure it's validated by your, your um, division officer. The next slide here talks about hard savings, hard dollars and soft savings, soft dollars. So these are the things you want to look at. Hard impact are things that go to the ledger. Soft are things like productivity improvement without staff reduction, cost avoidance, uh, those kind of things. And then this next template here is your implementation plan. How are we going to implement all of these solutions? Who's going to own them? So it's the start and the end and the deliverable. You can pull this template down also from our website. Um, change it around and make your own. But this is your implementation plan on, on all of those piloted solutions. Who's going to do it by when? That's what you want to do here with this. So in summary, you want to have a control plan in place, cost-benefit analysis, an implement, implementation plan, uh, make sure that is established. And we have a check sheet here to make sure that you can follow along in your control phase. And also don't forget to celebrate. <laughs>